these were the pillars so familiar to my blighted eyes. But now that I had begun to learn their true significance, I regarded the pillars' destruction with a new, enlightened sense of horror. And I questioned now whether Cain's simple refusal, his mere ambition, could truly have caused such devastation. I felt that some darker influence was at work here. As I approached, I discerned the spirit of Ariel, bound here now for more than a century. Forever am I bound, hope abandoned, my spirit tethered to this place. What destroyed the circle could not touch me, for I was newly dead and beyond harm's reach. I alone was spared the descent into madness, and Cain alone was spared the pain of death. When the Praptor's poison seized Cain even in the safety of the womb, much more than just his destiny was lost. All of Morsgoth lost balance. Consider us now, both of us less than we once were. I, pure but insubstantial, and Cain terribly real, but corrupted. Your imprisonment here has deranged your spirit. You fixate on Cain because you believe he is the tether that binds you here. But we both know he is not the author of your agony. The pillars were subverted by dark forces, invited by the Guardians themselves. The more I learn of your circle, the more I see a tangle of nested manipulations. Cain handed them their victory. They sought to topple the pillars, and he was their willing instrument. Or was he their unwilling pawn? Would it blunt your wrath to know that Cain's dilemma was calculated to bring the pillars down, regardless of the choice he made, and that the devastation would have been even greater had he chosen the path you would prescribe for him? Oh, you are a subtle, deceitful creature. But your clever arguments do not absolve Cain. He must die for the pillars to be restored. There is no other way. Then consider this more ominous possibility. What if Cain's death does not restore the pillars? Consider that it may simply be too late, that this world may be beyond redemption, and that you may be bound here eternally. me, demon. You can see that I am captive here. Show me some mercy. Like the mercy you showed your fellow guardians when you set Cain on them? Or the mercy you showed Cain when you kept him ignorant of his destiny while you used him as the scourge of the circle? Or perhaps like the mercy you showed your beloved Nepraptor when you made him Cain's first kill? You are cruel. Why do you torment me? I'm merely looking for answers, Ariel. Ah, oh, very well. I'll leave you in peace. But know this about you and this purgatory from which you long to escape. You're merely at the threshold. Come <laughs> on. 
Raziel, the failed assassin. You had Cain at your mercy, but lacked the courage to fulfill the act. And now you see the wasteland wrought by the tyrant's hand, by his selfish decision to preserve his own life, even when it meant sacrificing the whole world. This is the fate of Nosgoth, as long as Cain remains alive. An ironic condemnation, given this guilty scene. One would think you'd torn down the pillars single-handedly. What are you trying to obliterate as you drag your loathsome body through this chamber? And why, as Nosgoth descends into madness and misery, do you appear to thrive? Things in this world, I am learning, are rarely what they seem. You, apparently, are no exception. I am the engine of life, the source of Nosgoth's very existence. I am the hub of the wheel, the origin of all life, the devourer of death. Or maybe you're just hungry. Could it be as simple as that? Wouldn't that be poetic irony? The great adversary of the vampires turns out to be the biggest parasite of them all. Do not test my patience, Raziel. I made you, and I will unmake you if I become so inclined. As your agent, I am beyond death. There are fates worse than death, Raziel. Oh, I see you now as you truly are. A cancer, a spooling parasite burrowed deep in the heart of this world. Go now. Play out your pitiful rebellion and take your place among the destroyed, the used, and the damned. But know this. You are mine for eternity. You have always been, and will always be, my soul reaver.
Oh! 